decided to do a skin tone light sheet and I have four here so I'm going to go with the lightest on these and then darker on these. But I'm going to start out with this medium dark uh, skin tone and to start out I'm going to use E31 as a base for all over. Later on, this is going to be the highlight that shows up. And I usually just go in, kind of go around the eye because once you put color down there, you won't really be able to lift it. <laughs> Because even with the colorless blender, you will get this like really weird kind of rim where it's a darker ink color. Um, I'm not going about this in any sort of way. The way I color skin is usually with multiple layers. Um, Pierce this marker is dying so it's going to be a little streaky at first but I will fix that so just getting that base down now for most of the Copic colors as far as skin tones go they don't really have a whole lot of cool tones so the majority of these are either going to be neutral or warm toned in some way uh, I usually try to combat the warmness of the colors with cool shadows so like for this one I'll be using B93 a shadow base before I go in with some of the darker skin tones for this. As I said, I'm not really being too careful, just wanting to get an all over color. over the parts that have some streakiness to them. And then sometimes I will use this kind of flicking method to help blend the colors together. Um, the primary highlight of this piece is going to be right here like coming down so like this portion of the neck is going to end up being in shadow so pencil that I used for this piece and all the others on this were the Cola Race in the shape Lavender. I have tried the blue one and I think the Crimson. I don't particularly like how they work with the ink of the Copics or with the watercolors. Um, it's like one time I used the Crimson on a painting and I ended up with like red streaks throughout the painting so now I'm going to go in with E55 and I'm just going to set where I want my shadows to be and like I said I'm using that kind of flicking method to get kind of a blend here.
feel like I should be talking about something, but it's just don't really have much to say, honestly. So I apologize if I'm too quiet. Not a very talkative person usually, but If your markers are brand new, I would say be very careful with how you lay down the bases because like some areas will end up darker and bleed out more than a older marker that has used more ink. I have a marker, I think it was G99 who, or not who, but it kind of ruined one of my pieces because I didn't realize that it was gushing ink. It was totally my bad, uh, but it was really sad. So now I'm actually gonna go in with one of the shades that I'm gonna use for the shadows, and I'm going to use B93. And I'm just gonna go over what I just did, the E55, this area is going to be where I'm going to have the darkest dark. And I want it. I would recommend not going in with like black for a shadow because it's not really that realistic. Uh, most shadows actually have this kind of blue base, so having those in your pieces actually makes it kind of cohesive. And when you're working with neutral or warm undertones, it'll make that blue and the red clash so it will appear darker than it actually is. I'm just going back over that blue with the E55, and as you can see, that darkens it up pretty nicely. This marker is dying too. This is one of the ones that I use quite often. I have a refill. I'll probably have to refill it at some point. And this, uh, but for now I'm just going to go in with E23. I'm going to go back in that area, down, up, over. Try to keep it in frame for y'all. The paper that I'm using is the Canson XL Mixed Media. This is actually my favorite type of paper to use. Um, I actually like the Canson paper overall. I have their watercolor paper, which I use for most of my illustrations. Uh, the other paper that I t really like and that I will sometimes use is the Strathmore Tan. It's my favorite tan paper. It's a little bit thicker and handles layers of marker quite nicely. I ended up saying quite nicely multiple times in this video and I apologize. I'm actually going to pause you and I'm going to refill my E55. So I'll be right back. All right, now that it's refilled, I'm going to go in and I'm going to start with the darkest area and I'm going to kind of flick it over and I am going to have like the highest or part where the highlight is most noticeable is going to be on this cheek, that cheek, and right here. Uh, and of course that base layer that I used, E31, is going to actually be the highlight tone like I said. So, I'm just going in, 
course, have the cheekbone, create kind of a shadow. This side. arch to get that movement of the cheek and that shape. And then I'm going to flip it under the nose. Cheek. Sometimes if you give your markers a little bit of a rest, the ones that are like near dying, the ink will settle back down into the nib. At least I've noticed that. But... Sometimes you just need to get a refill. <laughs> As you can see, I did cover up the eyebrows because when you look at your eyebrows, you can actually see skin through it. So I usually go in with the actual hair eyebrow part later. usually dips like right about there at the bridge so a little bit of shadow there this is not going to by any means be the darkest area so I'm not going to So play on colors. Uh, the skin tone sometimes will appear differently depending on which colors you will use around it. So like in the background, I could use a blue and it would look different than if I use a yellow. I'm going to go back in with a E23. Back in. Way. As I've told y'all, this is a lot of layers. This is how I particularly learned, and this is how I like to work with markers the most. down on this side but not to the very end of the chin or the neckline whatever because um, that's going to be kind of a reflective highlight um, we 
you do occasionally get those, of course. For the other few skin tones, I'm actually going to just time lapse with them because this is kind of a long process. Of course, I ended up with a dark spot right here where I ended up with more ink in that one spot. So I'm going to Of course, I also went over the lips because your lips usually will end up kind of blending in with your skin tone. That was E23, in case you were wondering. Alright, I'm gonna go back in with the B93 real quick, and I'm going to. I want a lot of the focus to be on the eyes, so I'm darkening the areas right beside it so it'll make to go in with the E57 so that way I can bring out some of the E23.
school down the eyelid there. This is a little insight on how long it takes me to do my illustrations. the E23 to in a way outline it's not quite as dark as I want it to be so I'm gonna go in with the E57 I'm also going to use the E57 to do the eyebrows real quick and I'm going to flip the picture upside down and very 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 faintly touch the nib to the paper to get these kind of hairs. And 
little bit of the blue and then go back over it with the same shade. Just to darken it up. Now for the eyes, I'm going to go in with W1, which is a warm gray tone, and I'm going to under and around on the eyes. Around the irises. I'm going to take B triple zero and I'm just going to not with that one. Go around the iris because it's never purely white. And now I'm gonna go in with the um, E23. I'm gonna color in the iris. because it's the shade I have here. Making it darker up top and kind of getting the pupil in. Go in with the E57 to do dark areas. Like so, kind of doing a few small thin lines to kind of give it some more oomph. You can tell I'm kind of new at this video thing. I'm not quite comfortable with it, but I will get better. I am determined. Going with the blue, the B91, and then there you have irises. And I'm going to go in with the E. 57 to do some natural eyelashes and I usually go in from up top and just flick it out like so some lower lashes not too much and then I'm just going to take my Recollections Opaque Marker in Snow, and I'm just going to very lightly dab it off, like so, and then a few up here. And then I'm going to 
gonna take my jelly roll and I'm going to do the highlight. Reflection on the eyelashes. So here is the finished pieces. Uh, I didn't end up really. My dog is making funny noises. It's really cute. Um, so here are the finished pieces. I didn't end up doing a time lapse for these, but yeah, here they are. Um, one of my pieces that I'm working on with this skin tone is this one. I'm still a work in progress but it shows how it looks with other colors beside it so yeah I hope you enjoyed please hit that like and subscribe button and I'll see y'all later